everyone! So AP Environmental Science, or APES, was my first AP exam and it has a special place in my heart. I took it my freshman year of high school, I got a 5, so I thought I'd share all of my tips and tricks with you to help you succeed on the AP exam, get a 5, and ace those midterms and finals. I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible and timestamp everything because I know a lot of you are probably having a crisis the night before the exam right now, like I once did. So definitely stay tuned till the end, I'll tell you what to do if you have one night left or one week left, not a lot of time to study, but you can still make the most of it. Before we get into things, I want to shout out Prep Scholar, the sponsor of today's video. If you're in need of a great SAT or ACT resource to help you prepare, I highly recommend them. Their online program helped me to score a 1600 on my SAT, and with their 160 point score increase guarantee, I know they can help you too. They have a question bank very carefully tailored to match the style of the test, with thousands of questions in it, and very in-depth videos videos on every single concept you'll need to know, and they also offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you need that extra little boost to help you succeed. Check out the links in my description below for $50 off their SAT or ACT prep course, or check out their tutoring services through my link. Anyway, let's get into it. First, let's understand the format of the class and the test. These are all the units that are a part of APES and what percentages of the test they compose. Note that global warming is an extra important topic while the first two topics aren't weighted as heavily. The test itself is going to be 60% multiple choice and 40% free response, and both of these sections require very different study strategies, which we'll get to later. So my first tip, if it's still near the start of the school year, is to pay attention during class and take notes. Think of every day in class as another day to help you prepare for the AP exam. That is your end goal. And it's a very cliche thing to say, but there is a proper way to take notes. Not only should you be writing down what the teacher is saying, but you should also be comprehending it in a deep way. Way, whatever that looks like for you. Sometimes when I was taking notes, I would just go through the motions and write down what was on the slides the teacher was presenting, but later on I would find myself confused about the wordings that were on the slides or on certain concepts. I quickly found that the best way for me to learn something is kinesthetically by doing it, meaning engaged note taking was the best way for me to absorb the information, not just by reading or listening. Everyone learns a bit differently, but taking notes and trying to reword what the teacher says and raising your hand and asking questions if you don't quite understand something, picking out the important bits of information. That's always going to be better than just copying the slides word for word. Now my second tip is to use the resources that your teacher gives. Now if you're lucky, you'll have a good teacher who will not only teach the concepts, but also provide you with a lot of practice for the AP exam, and maybe talk about test taking strategies too. My teacher was amazing. She gave us a six week study plan, which was the main template I used to prepare for the AP exam. She also held review sessions during lunch, the month leading up to the exam, and held a practice AP exam that you could take for extra credit a couple weeks before the real thing. It's important to make use of any opportunity like this you get, even if it's during lunch or a little bit inconvenient, because while you can get the practice FRQs at home, there aren't that many multiple choice sections online, and that's something that you have to get from your teacher. College Board also has a thing called AP Classroom now, which didn't exist when I was a freshman, but that's kind of supposed to replace these in-person printed tests that your teachers would give you. So if you get assigned something in AP Classroom, definitely do it, and maybe even ask your teacher for extra problems in AP Classroom, since those questions are going to be the best indication of what the multiple choice section will look like. So definitely do all the multiple choice you can get your hands on. Now, if you have a not so great teacher or you're self-studying for the exam, then never fear. Even though there aren't as many videos online about APES as there are for a more popular class like APUSH or AP Chem, there are still a lot of great online resources you can be using. I loved the Bozeman science videos. I thought those were a great way to review. If you need a speedier review, just set them to 1.5 or 2 times speed. The channel Green Mountain Energy makes really good engaging animated videos about all the different types of renewables energy that can act as a really nice quick review. Crash Course also has a few good ecology videos that can act as a very good apes review, and College Board now has very in-depth videos on their YouTube channel covering the entire content of every single AP subject, including apes. So the next tip is to not just study but to study smart. I started off by taking very colorful aesthetic notes while reading the textbook that my school gave me, and this was okay, and it was very aesthetically pleasing, but it didn't help me much and it took up a lot of my time. There are three main things you should be doing with your study time to use it most effectively and be as efficient as possible when you're studying, so you can do other things with your life. You should either be reviewing the notes from class that you took or from like 
AP College Board videos if you're self-studying by converting those into another form, like flashcards or little review sheets, like just trying to summarize your large set of notes in a smaller way. Then the second thing is you should be using that smaller form of your notes to study by asking yourself questions about it, um, making sure you're not just passively reading over them, but more active studying. Or the last and probably the most important thing leading up to your exam is by taking those practice FRQs and multiple choice exams if you have access to those. So converting your notes into other forms like this helps you to be actively studying instead of just skimming through them without retaining anything. And websites like Quizlet will have great ways to test yourself on all these concepts. And bonus side note, if you don't have access to AP Classroom, a lot of students will compile the multiple choice question and answers on Quizlet. It's only a little bit sketchy. They're called things like apes chapter review finals. So that's another way to at least be getting used to the types of questions you'll be seeing if you don't have access to those multiple choice exams. But honestly, the most important thing to be doing is to be taking those practice FRQs, in my opinion. And you should should probably be devoting at least half of your study time. You want to be really comfortable with the format of the test before you have to take it, both of the multiple choice and FRQs. But if you're prepped enough for the FRQs, that's 40% of the test right there, and you're kind of prepared for the multiple choice by proxy. But like taking enough practice tests will teach you random things about the test that are helpful, like the fact that the first few multiple choice questions on every test, at least back when I took it, they were always based on a map of the world. Or you learn that there are four different types of FRQs that you're going to encounter. You learn that most of the test is going to be based on global warming, more so than some of the other subjects. You learn things like this from experience and lots of practice, which makes it really important to take those practice tests. This leads me to my next point. You should be completing as many of the FRQs on College Board's website as you physically can. I'll leave those linked below just in case you want an easy way to find them, but take a look at this APES page. They don't release the multiple choice questions since they like to use really similar questions and a lot of teachers like to also use them for their final exams, but they will have all of the FRQs from the past 20 years or so, with answers and student examples you can look through for what's a good or a bad response, for examples of what to do and what not to do. This is probably the most important resource I can recommend because it helped me so much. That was one of my biggest struggles on the exam, was these FRQs and how I'm supposed to be answering them. So it helps to be looking at those student examples and seeing what they did right and wrong and what you can learn from them. Even if you don't go through all of the FRQs throughout the year and you're running a little bit short on time before your exam, I would suggest reading through all of the the answer keys of the FRQs and making sure you know all of those concepts that they mention as kind of a last resort. The worst thing ever is kind of being frozen and not knowing how to answer one of them, but if you read through enough of these answers ahead of time, you'll soon learn how to BS your way through any of the topics, even if you know nothing about it, using the power of previous year's answer keys and biodiversity. That's the beauty of the free response questions. There are concepts that get mentioned time and time again, so if you're unsure, you can usually put down one of those concepts as your answer and at least get partial or maybe even full credit if you can BS well enough. Another reason to study with these FRQs is that your teacher is pretty likely to use them on a test or in some way as a part of the class. So it can be really handy to have read through some of those FRQs right before your exams because then you might be very prepared for some of the questions. It's also good to set a timer for about 20 minutes for each FRQ and complete it to the best of your ability and mark the questions you're unsure about. Then go back over with a different pen color, act like you're the grader, and be as hard on yourself as possible. Write down a few of the bullet point answers from the answer explanations on your sheet of paper when you're doing this to reinforce them in your mind, especially if they're better and more coherent than what you wrote down. Then when the time comes for the real test, the answers you formulate will be more in line with what the graders want to see. We love College Board and how they encourage conformity over creativity. That's just the way it is for most of these AP exams, I'm gonna be honest. The next thing I'll mention is that you don't need a review book to succeed. If you want to get one, that's totally valid and it's a really good resource a lot of the time, but just know that it's definitely not necessary. I only use my notes from class, resources from my teacher, and my school's textbook. Most of the College Board resources didn't even exist when I was taking it. Sometimes going through review books for more theoretical subjects like apes that aren't as math-based just ends up wasting more time that you could be spending on actually doing problems and practicing with real College Board approved content. But this still depends on how you learn best, obviously. For the AP classes I took later, I did enjoy the Baron books if you're looking for a book that I would recommend. So my last tip is how to cram study if it's the night before or the week before your exam. Hopefully you know what your weakest topics are, so you should be reviewing those the most in these critical hours or days. The global warming unit is the one that's stressed the most, so if you feel pretty well-rounded, then focus on that. So take the FRQs that are related to your weakest topics, if you only have time for a few FRQs, and also try taking your weakest FRQ type. So for me, and I think for a lot of people, that was the math FRQs. If you're super 
super pressed for time, just focus on reading through those answers for the FRQs since that's almost more important than doing them yourself if you haven't gone through a lot of them yet. And that goes by really quickly so you can fit a lot more in. And you'll get some semi-decent preparation by just kind of passively absorbing the answer formats. Although I really wouldn't recommend doing this if you have an extended period of time to study because it is going to always be better to be actively trying it yourself and do that active prep before the exam. So if it's literally the night before your exam, I recommend that you do this. Read through as many FRQ answers as you can and write down the key points that you take away from each one. Then when you get sick of that and it's almost time for bed, watch videos on the hardest subjects for you or topics that you don't entirely understand. This is easier than doing the full length tests and it's easy to do even if you're completely stressed out. You're not going to accomplish that much more at this point and it's best to just do a relaxed review instead of stressing yourself out more than you need to. The only thing left to do is to get a good night's sleep, eat breakfast as best you can tomorrow, bring a blue or black pen and a lot of pencils, and just try your best. You got this. You've been preparing for this all year by taking your class, even if it doesn't feel like it, so I know you're gonna rock it. I've linked all the study materials that I've mentioned in the description, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them, and be sure to leave any tips you have for people who are also taking their tests soon. Thanks for watching, be sure to check the description for that Prep Scholar link below, and good luck on your exam. I'll see you soon.